Well, 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 this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hello there. I hope all of you are doing well. Okay, let's give ourselves a minute or two and uh, just um, get it to the broadcast today. I believe it will be a blessing to you. All right. Um, if you can just um, tag a friend of two, that will be a blessing to... Uh, get them to be blessed as well, even as we get into the word of God, okay? Patricia, blessings of the Lord be upon you. It is well with you and your house. It is well with you and your house, Patricia. This is indeed a wonderful day that it is so beautiful, so beautiful for what God has done and still doing, even in our lives, all right? Uh, share the broadcast to your friends and loved ones. Invite somebody. Invite somebody. All right. Let everybody be blessed as you are blessed. Amen. All right. Share the broadcast. Good morning to you as well. Good morning to you as well, Pat uh, Patricia. Good afternoon to all of you wherever you are. Good evening. All right. Wherever you are under the sound of my voice. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, it is well with you. It is well with you and your house. It is well with you and your house. Good afternoon to you now. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Please share the broadcast. Tag a friend. All right. Tag a friend and um, let um, people receive this blessing of the word of God as well, all right? So um, tag a friend, invite somebody, make a joyful noise into their ears, all right? Alicia, you are watching, God bless you. God bless you, you are watching, and um, everyone, everyone, when please, when you come to the platform, make yourself known, all right, to be identified, I'm going to take my time to acknowledge um, all of you. I haven't talked to you or seen you for a while. So please uh, make sure you also invite somebody, love somebody, be a blessing to another person, and um, let this broadcast go as far as it can go, okay? In Jesus' name. In a minute, we're going to be entering into the Word, and um, I have a word for you that will be a blessing to you as well, okay? All right, um, we're gonna have a word of prayer in a minute, and then we'll get to get to the word. We'll get to the word in Jesus' name. All right. Um, all right. Let's have a word of prayer, Father. In Jesus' name, we thank you for this morning. We give you the praise, glory, and honor for what you have done for us and still doing in our lives. We are so grateful to you. Lord, I pray for this, your precious ones, under the sound of my voice, wherever they are. Let revelation knowledge flow freely. Let understanding increase and abound in their lives. Bring them to the saving knowledge of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Rose, Rose, I thank God for you. I thank God for you in Egypt. Well, we've been talking about... We've been taught good afternoon to you as well, Rose. Good afternoon to you. Now you can, um, I'm still in, I'm still um, in um, Jamaica. We're still in Jamaica with uh, September to Remember Conference. And um, it's going on like you will never believe. God is doing awesome and wonderful things here and uh, in the, um, the nation of Jamaica, specifically in the place called... Um, Connors District, Connors District, um, in the, uh, the, uh, the Church of um, the Gethsemane um, Church of God in Christ, Gethsemane Church of God in Christ, that is where the program is, and um, it's going to be over uh, tomorrow, so if you in and around the district of, um, um, of uh, Connors, Lace Grace, Blessings Lace, 
upon you i declare it is well with you and your house so if you know anybody or you are watching me listening to me you are in jamaica in the district or in the place called um connors connors district in saint catherine that is where um it, it's it's happening all right um at the gethsemane gethsemane church of god in christ the program ends tomorrow september to remember 20 19 live going on in in Jamaica and um, I'm telling you it's um it's it's amazing what God is doing listen beloved you better believe that God is still at work Jesus is not dead he's alive and his spirit the Holy Spirit is is actively alive you will not believe I'm telling you you know I think it's it's really time that we we do everything to come out of religious beliefs and um, practically make our christian life more practical beloved i'm telling you it, it's a, it's it's amazing what took place in the days of the disciples is still happening in our days in in our days as the disciples of this dispensation of grace and truth and it's amazing what it, what is happening so you 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 have to you know like somebody said what do you have to lose what do you have to lose by practically believing in Jesus and his his spirit who is with us what do you have to lose beloved you have nothing to lose are you listening to me you have nothing to lose it's 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 amazing it's amazing what's happening here in jamaica in this um conference september to remember conference it's amazing i'm telling you god is still at work and um yesterday was awesome yesterday was awesome apostle barbara henry oh my goodness i mean the anointing was was too strong the anointing was strong and um you know deliverance was taking places I mean, you you see when when the when the anointing comes, all right. When the anointing is at work, it's it's the spirit of work, you know, the spirit of God at work doing its own thing. You don't even have to swear to yourself and doing nothing. Oh my goodness, it's amazing, and it's 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 coming to a close tomorrow. So make sure that make sure that if you know anybody or your friends, loved ones, or you are living. Um, in the the Connors district of St. Catherine in Jamaica you better find find yourself I mean train yourself um, airplane yourself drive yourself ship yourself walk yourself bicycle yourself whatever you got to do yourself to get to you know get Semini Church of God in Christ in St. Catherine in the, uh, the district of Connors it's amazing God is doing wonderful blessings upon you as well disciple Rama it is it's it's awesome it's awesome and so tomorrow is a nice last night okay tomorrow is the last night so um, come just just come in just come in and get get yours now the theme I want to share with you the theme of this conference okay which is um, is found in John the book of John the fifth chapter the book of John the fifth chapter some of you might have heard of or read this um, scripture many times but there's something I want to bring and uh, bring to your attention that when I when I caught this it's like mm, we got to check this in very well so you come with me if you have your Bibles with you come with me um, with um, with me to John the fifth chapter beloved I want you to keep your fingers on the share button share it to your friends all right invite somebody continue to type friends start your watch party right now and all that good stuff all right come with me to um john the fifth chapter and let's read some scriptures you know we got to read all right now the bible says following to now if you don't have your bibles just write this uh, scriptures now and please check them out we're going to try to dissect it as much as we can all right now the scripture says we read from verse one. Later on, the, on the, later on, there was a Jewish festival, and Jesus went 
up to Jerusalem to that festival. All right. Now in Jerusalem, near the sheep gate, there were far, there were pool, which is called in Hebrew or, or in the Jewish Aramaic, Bethsaida. Bethsaida. It has five, you know, trenches or five porches. Verse 3 says, in this porches lay a great number of people who were sick. In this place lay a great number of people who were sick. Now, I want you to, you know, in, just position yourself here. Now, the sick people, they were blind, they were lame, all right? And um, what was the other one? They were blind, they were lame, they were withered, paralyzed. Blind, okay, lame, and paralyzed. Now, beloved, these three, you know, I, I've been paying attention to these three areas of sickness or diseases that affect a person to literally bring you to a place of shut down. Literally. Literally, spiritually and physically, shut down, blind. Now, when you're blind, well, how you gonna see? You don't see the beauty of 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 God's act at work. You know, when you are blind, you are pretty pretty much handicapped. When you are blind, you are pretty much handicapped. Those of you who've been following this, the the uh, the teachings, remember in the in Romans we read about having the veil of Moses on your face. When you are you are blind with a veil, beloved, you don't see. Okay? You are you are you are short sighted. You can't see clear. You cannot have the th I mean you can't see. You're literally literally your the, the 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 light of your body is shut off. So you will need the assistance of somebody Maybe with a cane or, or somebody holding you or somebody leading you or something. When you are blind, beloved, your, your entire body is dark. There is darkness in your life. And you know that when there is darkness, beloved, you can't see. In Genesis, we, we, we read where when God, Bible says that when God came on the scene, there was darkness all all. all, all over the face of the earth. Darkness was over the face. In other words, nothing was moving. Have you been in that place where it's like nothing seemed to be moving in your life? Things are just dark. Beloved, when you are blind, when you are blind, things are literally dark in your life. Bible says that God came on the scene and things were dark. He says, let there be light. Now, if darkness... If darkness is something that is good, I don't think God would have called for light to overshadow the darkness. I, I hope I'm talking to somebody here. So light is so important in our lives. We need light. We don't need darkness. But when you are blind, you are in, in a state of darkness. You cannot function, okay, the way you ought to function. So here we see that he says, the Bible says in verse 3, that there were, this, in, in these five porches, lay a great multitude of people. Great multitude of people who were sick. Multitude. I have been there in Bethsaida. I have been there. I've seen the, 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 um, the, 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 the pool where it was. And I'm, I'm wondering, my goodness, this is a little small, and it's a little small area. How do you get all this multitude of people? We're going to find out something here. I'm beginning to understand why this guy also said nobody helped him into that. Watch this. So there were blind people and there were lame people. Beloved, talking about lame. Now, if you are lame, lame, you know what that is? You cannot, you, you can't function. You, you, lame, being lame and paralyzed, just, just, it's just about the same thing or go to hand in hand. You paralyze, you can't function. You cannot lift yourself. You cannot do anything. You are literally paralyzed and there's nothing you can do. And this were the people who, who were at the pool. 
waiting, the Bible says, for the angel of the Lord who comes just by a specific time or a season, almost just to say that just once per that season, if you will. Beloved, there is something about the month of September that I want to throw some light to you. But I don't want to go ahead of myself. So you follow in tow. Watch this now. Now, the scripture says, there were all these sick people there waiting for the stirring of the water. Waiting for the stirring of the water. For the angel of the Lord went down into the pool at an appointed season and stirred up the water. Okay, the angel of the Lord went down because like I said, I've been there. So it's downstairs. It's down there. And I'm wondering in that small place that you need to find yourself down there. How? I mean, we're talking about, I mean, it's something else. See, sometimes until until you have been to, you know, the, the land of Israel to see some of these places, when you read it, you, you don't get the, the real picture of it. You don't get a real picture of it. That's why I encourage every one of you to make sure that once in your lifetime, you will find your way to the land of Israel to see these places that scripture talks about. It's real and it's live right there. Beloved, the Bible says that the angel of the Lord went down into the pool at an appointed season and stirred up the water. The first one to go in after the water was stirred was healed of his disease. The first one to go in there. Now, if this, looking at this small area, I mean, maybe it's, it's, it's less, it's, it's less than, I mean, it's, it's, it's really a small area. And to have all these people there, okay, it means that literally they were they were they were you know crushing each other they were they were just forcing themselves on each other and all that because they, you know it's a it's it's a small area that this this water this pool is there it's not a big thing beloved it's not a big thing and so knowing very very well that this is what gives me my break or what what will give me my breakthrough, beloved? The, the stampede. You can imagine the stampede. You can imagine the stampede. Because it, the pool is not stirred all the time. It's stirred in a season, in a time, in a particular time, probably a particular time of the year. So after that, you have to just wait until that time comes again. And beloved, this is what was happening to people who were going through all kinds of diseases and sicknesses. I don't know what you may determine a sickness or a disease. I don't know which area of your life that you need the stirring of the water of Jehovah so you can stir, you can turn yourself in there. We, I mean, you are going through whatever you are going through. And it's like, Lord, I need this breakthrough. I need this solution to, and I mean, I need this. You are, you, you, you have all, you have done it all. Beloved, there is a time for it. You know, the month of September in our current calendar, supposed to be the ninth month. I want to connect this to the month in which human beings are literally delivered or brought forth. When a woman gets pregnant, it's expected that on the in the ninth month, okay, which is the month of birth, that is why it's a month of birthing, is a month of birthing. When when the ninth month comes, the woman have to deliver. Interestingly, if a woman takes a, a seed and the woman delivers before the ninth month, they call it premature. Premature. So both, most of the time, the children who are born before the ninth month are called premature. They are not 
well seasoned. Okay, for the timing in which women give birth. There's something I'm connecting with season and time here. You don't want to receive premature stuff. This is the ninth month. What is the connection here of the ninth? This is where September to remember it's a um, it's it's a it's a it's a conference of a mystery. It's a time where God shows up like the angel. Now, basically, this is the angel of the Lord carrying the spirit and the mantle of God. So it's God Himself staring, coming to stir up the water. God is coming to give you your breakthrough. You you don't need listen, this is not the time of your fastings and your prayers and, and your, your 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 all those things you do. This is a time that people wait for the angel of God, the representative of God. God manifesting himself through the angel comes and give that which people are expecting. Beloved, may you receive your breakthrough in this month. This is a month of breakthrough. This is a month of birthing. Are you getting the revelation here? And so here, this look at this. And it says, the first one to go in after the water was stirred was healed of his disease. The first one to go in. Now let's read something and continue. Verse 5. There was a certain man. We don't even know who this person is. No name, nothing. He said there was a certain man. There was a certain man. There was a certain man there who had been ill for 38 years. Now, the other day I said, if the angel comes once a year or once in a season, whatever the season may be, that people get their breakthroughs. This guy was there for what? 38 years. Man, he got to be the grandfather of all diseases. He got to be, he, I mean, what, 38 years, he's been there for 38 years. Now, when are you going to get yourself in here? Because, like I said, it's a place where it's it's not a, it's not a big place. The pool is not a big area, it's, and you need to go down. It's not like on the surface where you just walk into like a river or something like that. No, you need to descend yourself down there. I've been there in in Israel. It's there. You need to go down there, find yourself down there, and then get into the pool. And so here is a situation with this guy. He's been around there, okay? He, uh, now, let's read this in very carefully. There was a certain man there. He was there who had been ill for 38 years. He was there. There where? Was he at the pool? Was he by the pool? Or was, he was up there. He hasn't descended to the, to the pool yet. Because again, if you don't know this, you will never understand this. Because I have seen it, I've been there, so I can see what the scripture is talking here. Beloved, you need to descend yourself it's to the pool. It's not there. So where was the guy? Was he at the top? Or was he by the side of the pool? But the scripture doesn't say. He says that there was a certain man there who had been ill for 38 years. He was there. Whatever the there is, is, is the question. What, where, where was the there? Now, watch this. When he, when Jesus noticed him, verse 6, when Jesus noticed him, lying there, here we go again with the there, lying there, there where, by the pool, or on top of the pool, because again, you need to descend yourself down. Because if you want to understand what I, the description I'm giving you, you can look at it from verse 4. It says, the angel of the Lord went down into the pool. He went down. He didn't walk into the pool. He went down. So everybody coming to the pool must find themselves descending down to the pool. So that's, that is where the revelation here is. And watch this. And he says, when Jesus, verse 6, when Jesus noticed him lying there, 
helpless, knowing that he had been in that condition a long time, Jesus said to him, Jesus said, I, I, I didn't used to understand why Jesus always asks people, what do you want me to do for you? You are Jesus. You are the, you are the healer. You are the Messiah. You are the Savior. You, you, you should know what I need, but Jesus will always ask you. You know why? Because it's a divine principle that you do not force yourself on anybody irrespective of whichever anointing you are carrying. People must be must be must be must be receptive and ready to receive. Do you know there are a lot of people who don't who are comfortable in their in in, in wherever they are they, they don't see themselves they don't see anything wrong with their with their state of poverty they don't see anything anything wrong with their state of sickness or illness they don't see nothing and so Jesus always asks and here look at this look at this Jesus then asks him do you do you want to get well Jesus asks him that now we don't know again here we don't know again whether the guy was close to the pool because another thing I can tell you is this because you need to descend to go to the pool immediately you descend okay you enter the pool that is what it is immediately you descend so that tells me that the guy had not descended that little small you know hill to get into the pool that is what it is the guy has not descended he has not made the move to get out of the, the hilltop to descend to the pool so jesus saw him okay and jesus asked him do you want to get well because hey it's up to you do you want to get well do you want to receive this gospel of salvation or do you want to continue believing your religious beliefs do you want to be free understanding that jesus has come to set you free from your guilt of sin and condemnation and brought you and he, he has shed his blood okay to reinstitute a new agreement a new covenant between god and you do you want to be free do you want to do you want, do you want to believe that jesus has done that for you or you want to continue to believe your 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 religious belief jesus asked him this do you want to get well because if you want to get well the top here is not where you ought to be you're going to get down there because the pool is down there the pool is not where you are but listen to the answer jesus i mean the guy gave uh, to jesus giving jesus and you know one of the things you need to understand about jewish people all right they answer question with a question if you know their culture and know them very well you understand what i'm saying. every jewish person will tell you. they answer question with a question sometimes you you ask them like are you hungry or for example like are you hungry well they they will instead of say yes they will answer you oh if i get something i'll eat <laughs> that was not the question the question is do you want to get well listen to listen to the answer he gave jesus he gave jesus the bible says an invalid answer he gave jesus an invalid answer in other words the answer he gave jesus was not even necessary it wasn't even called for but i can now tell by revelation that the guy has not he was not close to the pool knowing where the pool is now i think by revelation i'm beginning to get this now the guy was on top of the pool he hasn't descended yet listen this is what he told jesus he says sir i have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up and while I am coming, watch this now, while I am coming to get into it myself, someone else, watch this, steps down ahead of me. So in other words, the guy looking at this carefully, the guy has not made himself down there. He was still on top. He was still on top of, of the mountain. 
where you need to descend to go to the pool. Beloved, what am I saying? This is the, the month of delivery, the ninth month. If you deliver, if every pregnant woman will tell you this, if you deliver your, your, your pregnant baby before the ninth month, I don't know where this comes from, I'm still doing some research. And some of you ladies probably can tell me. He says, he says, I don't have anybody to help me. Now, it makes you wonder, which of these diseases was this guy suffering from? Because we have blind people who made themselves, who made their way down there to receive their breakthrough, to receive their sight. We have people who were lame, who made themselves down there, found themselves down there to receive their healing. There are people who were paralyzed, they found themselves down there, paralyzed. Now, whether somebody carried them down there or they, however they found themselves down there, this guy could equally do the same thing. Somehow, some way, for 38 years, for 38 years, he was still at this at the top there. And when Jesus came and saw, saw him, he says, ask him. And that's why Jesus asked him this. Because people who want their healing make a move. Those who want their breakthroughs make a move. You want, to you want to receive the right message. You need to make a move to receive the right message. If not, you will still be sitting in that dead place receiving the wrong messages. And guess what? You're, you are not going to just come out to see what you ought to see and receive what you ought to receive. If you are sitting in a, in a, in a, a house of worship and by the time you come out of that place, the message there had condemned you so much that you can't even see yourself as any, any candidate for God's blessings. Beloved, you need to get yourself out of that place. Because you know what? They have, the, they have not received okay, the revelation of the new covenant that God has instituted through Christ Jesus with you. Are you getting the revelation here? So watch this. The guy said, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. And when and while I am coming, watch this now, while I am coming to get into the pool myself, someone else steps down. It didn't say some, someone else entered the pool. Someone else gets steps down down ahead of me some of you some of you need to uh, start preparing yourself for our 2020 visits to israel some of you got to prepare see, you see you got to see these things so that reading the scripture okay will will you will make more sense to you if somebody who has not, like um, the other person, uh, this guy told me, he says, if a blind is leading a blind, a lot of a lot of people reading the scripture have not even seen practically where these things are. They are reading from something they don't even have no experience. They are reading from, you know, with no no practical experience, no practical. Listen. I thank God for the opportunity to see and continue to see. And every year I'm going to go see it. So I'm telling you, as a believer, as a believer, you need to make up your mind that, you know what? If all these places I read about, Jerusalem, Cana, Nazareth, here, all this, they are all on the face of this earth. Then why am I, am I denying myself? Of seeing it myself. Beloved, the places you read in the Bible here, they are all here on the face of this year. You know, when I was younger, I used to think that uh, you hear about heaven and Cana and all those places. You know, they, they gave us a, a picture as though those places were in heaven somewhere. On those places, we can only see those places when we die and go to heaven. 
I am beginning to see that that is what probably they knew. They knew by receiving wrong, and this is what I keep telling you, when you receive wrong, you are going to believe wrong. When you are believing wrong, you will live wrong. And when you are living wrong, you will act wrong. The preachers and the leaders and the Sunday school people, uh, um, teachers and all that, I believe, I, I believe now, they believe that these places were in heaven too. Because if they receive wrong, then they can only, okay, teach wrong. But for me to realize that these places are all on the face of this earth, i got to go there and see it myself. So now when I'm reading the word of God, I am not reading from religious point of understanding. I am re reading from both practical and by revelation. I'm reading it from, from the point of practicality, the practical, physical aspect of it, seeing myself on there and by revelation. Beloved, you know, I asked somebody the other day, think about this. When the decree, Herod made that decree, okay, that every child, every male child, two years and below, must be killed. Jesus, Jesus was taken to Egypt, Israel, I mean to Africa, all right, to, to escape death, if you will. Remember that Jesus was six months or six months younger than his cousin John the Baptist. So my question to you is, where was John the Baptist? Have you ever thought about that? Where was John the Baptist? John the Baptist was six months older than Jesus. When the decree went forth for which uh, Joseph had to take Mary and the baby Jesus out of the place to, uh, to Africa, John the Baptist was six months. They were killing all male children, all male child, children from two years and under. Where was John the Baptist? Beloved, these are some of the things that you cannot find them in the scripture. I, I want to challenge you and I want to encourage you. All right, put your money where your mouth is. Start putting money aside and join the 2020 Israel trip for you to experience, have an experience that when, when you open your Bible, it will begin to make more sense to you. Some of the things we waste, we waste our money on, that they, are not, they are not lasting things. They're some of the clothes, the shoes, I mean, you go to, oh, I don't want to get there. So the clothes, the shoes, the, this and all that, they are, they, they are not lasting experiences. Beloved, as a child of God, get a lasting experience. There are certain things that, trust me, it doesn't matter what kind of preaching that anybody preach. I know that I know that I know that I know that this is it. Because you know why? I have seen it. I have feel it. I have touched it. And you cannot take that from me. You can't. I know certain things that you it's it's not it's not it's not it's not even in the word but look at this this situation here how could i have understand it now that i have seen where the pool of Bethsaida is so when somebody is talking about you know uh, um the, you know the, uh, the the pool of Bethsaida and this and all that well i listen to them a, a lot of preachers i listen to them it's like you all don't even know what you're talking about the pool was not just on the surface ground. You need to find yourself into the pool. When, when we talk about into the pool, it's about descending a hill to the pool. So this is the situation. Jesus did not meet the guy, okay, by the, by the pool side, where the pool is. He met the guy on top of the rock where he has to descend into the pool. And that is why the guy said that while I am coming to get into the pool, someone else steps. He didn't say steps up. He says steps down ahead of me. Because you need to step down to the pool. It's not the pool. It's not on the surface ground. Are you listening to me? But So for 38 years. Now, the Bible don't tell us 
as to what kind of the diseases mentioned here that the guy found himself in. Whether he was a blind guy, whether he was a lame guy, whether he was a paralyzed guy, the Bible doesn't tell us. All we know is that there was a guy there, also sick, of one of those sicknesses mentioned, and even more. But for 38 years, for 38 years, you need to join me. We're going to do some research, and then you need to understand. But you see, my point today is for you to have this understanding that there is a move that takes place by season. There's a move. This is why I've been, I've been drilling this to you, that you need to understand that God, God deals with mankind by covenant and by dispensation. God deals with people by dispensations and by, by covenant. In John chapter 1 verse 17, the Bible tells you and I that the law, the covenant that God made by the law came by Moses. The covenant of grace and truth. Are you listening to me? The new covenant came by Jesus. So if you don't understand this and then you want to you want to pick up things of the law to live your life in the now. Beloved, it has no effect. You may get a temporary situation for whatever it is, but you're not going to get a lasting, effect, lasting solution. And on top of that, most of the time, I don't want to forget this, to always remind you that the, the, the curse that was associated with that of the law, don't forget that. So if you are not able to fulfill the whole, you know, 613 of the laws, please leave it alone. There were 613 of the laws. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you? So you better leave it alone. So here is a situation that you need to understand the dispensation in which you are living in and then enjoy all that is in there. And that's where, that's where comes your salvation. That is where your salvation comes in. Beloved, there's nothing more important to God concerning you than your salvation. There's nothing more important. Listen, you can hear all kinds of messages or anything you want to hear. There's nothing more important to God than your salvation. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So it's very important that we, we get this. Now, this is something I want to share with you again come with me look at verse look at verse um verse 8 look at verse 8 so jesus said to the guy jesus said to him pick up get up he says get up pick up your pallet and walk get up pick up get up and pick up <laughs> now what what picture are you now getting about this guy and the and what kind of the diseases mentioned here do you see this guy? Pick up. He says, first of all, get up. So obviously the guy was on the ground. Right? He says, get up. And then pick up your pallets or your burdens and walk. Now, that sounds to me like somebody who is paralyzed or lame. Because, because obviously, blind person can be walking. But Jesus specifically says, get up and walk. So we need to, you know, get all this so we can understand that. Now, again, again, watch this, verse 9. Immediately, the man was healed and recovered his strength. And picked up his pallet and walked. He recovered his strength. So, it sounds like he was lame. No strength. Paralyzed. No strength. That's what I said earlier. Those two, eh? there's, there's, a, there's a, a symbolic thing between the two. So, so he, he received that. And then he began to, you know, walk. 
Now, we're going to read the rest of the scripture, but, but there's something I want to show you here because of time. Today, I'm talking about the time, the season. Beloved, don't let this month of September pass by. Listen, if you are one of those people who entered, you know, church service on 2018, December 2018, the New Year's Eve service, where most people go to church and, you know, they, they, they make declarations and they make, uh, what do you call this, uh, all those uh, promises of, uh, of the new year and all that. Some of you went there, and there you went there and you were, you were praying and telling God, God, in 2019, you know, give me this. 2019, I want to do this. 2019, Lord, I want to do that. 2019, I want to do this. I want to do that. Beloved, you know, you know what you were doing? You were sowing seeds. See, this is what we're talking about, seeds. When I, immediately you mention seeds, you talk about people think about money. No. The words, Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit. The words they are speak, they are spirits and they have effect. Whatever I send it, it goes and accomplish and it comes back. So is you. So is you. This is why I keep saying this to you all the time. Be careful what comes out of your mouth when your back is against the wall and you feel like it's going through. Be very careful because whatever comes out of your mouth will, will, will accomplish something. I mean, I, I sit here today and I regret a lot of things I have said out of ignorance. Out of ignorance. I, I pray to the throne of grace that if possible, certain things that I've said against some people or, or, or whatever situation it may be, if it's possible, of course, I was immature. And of course, in the state of sometimes, you know, disappointment, you know, angry, be, feel betrayed, and all that. I don't know. Listen, I, I like to be real. I don't know about you. I am real. And I want to be. And I'm comfortable with it. I don't like sugarcoating nobody. I don't I don't lift nobody up. In terms of putting you on a pedestal like you, Jesus. No, I will I will celebrate you. But for for for, for me to for you to think that I so Hail you as Jesus? Forget that. No. No. But there's something about season and time. I've put this thing to you that as to why women have hold these babies for nine months. When it's before nine months, they, they call it premature. After nine months, it's overdue. So what is this nine month here? Where is this thing coming from? Beloved, stay tuned. I will share more mystery with you. In this ninth month, you would deliver your baby. Oh, what you prayed and what you asked God in 20, 2018, that December. Huh? Calculate from January to now. December 31st. You said all kinds of things in church. You prayed all kinds of prayers. Some of you were crying and, and all this, Lord, I've seen this year. This year didn't go the way it is. Next year, Lord, let it be. Let that, 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 that. And all those things. Some of you have even forgotten all that you said. Beloved, it's time for you to deliver. Go back today. I'm going to end here. Go back. <laughs> Liz says she's, she's driving. She can't comment. Well, Liz, I don't need you to take your hands off the, the steering. Keep your hands on. <laughs> Are you listening? Because I need you to give me the comment when your hands are free. Now, that goes to every one of you. Please. When you are driving and listening, just listen. You can go back and listen after the broadcast again so you can make all your comments just in case you want to say something you forgot. But don't drive and test. No, don't. Now, all that you said took seed. Some of you have even forgotten that you're pregnant and the ninth month have come. Well, 
I have come to sound the trumpet to remind you that your, your ninth month has come and you need to deliver. Go back to that place of prayer. Remember the prayers that you prayed and what you, you expected to see. Listen, there is something called intentional blessing from God. Intentional blessing. Intentional blessing. I read the scripture where I saw the scripture says that God says, Jesus says, he said, I intentionally chose Saul intentionally for the sake of the gospel. Oh, listen, they are intentional blessings. This is the month of God's intentional blessing. Are you listening? I, I'm, I believe it. I don't know about you. Looking at the seasons in which this was done, this was not everyday occurrence. This was not everyday thing. This was a season, a time. After this September, you think you're going to see September again in this year? No, you got to wait for next time. And so was the time where the angel comes and stirs up the water. And right after that, you got to wait. And for 38 years, I don't know about you if you have all this time to wait. But today is the 12th. Today is September 12th. Numbers have significance. Numbers have significance. Numbers have significance. And you need to find out. Today is the 12th. I pray. I pray with, 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 with all trust and belief. I pray that you will come to the place of understanding what I'm talking about here. All right? We're going to see that. Listen, let me show you some scripture. And we're going to close here. Come with me to the book of Luke. Come with me to Luke. Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. Jesus was passing through Gennesaret. Okay? Was Gennesaret is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a district in Israel. We've been there too. Gennesaret and all that. We've been to all those places. Now, Jesus was passing through that area to Galilee. Okay, come with me to um, Luke chapter 8. Look at verse 40. I want us to read this scripture briefly, briefly, and we're going to close here. <clears throat> we're going to close here. Now, Jesus was returning to Galilee. Okay? And I want you to please, as always, go and start from verse 1. So you can have a better and a clear understanding of what we're reading. But to make the, the point here, I want to share this with you. Jesus was returning to Galilee. The people welcomed him, for they had all been expecting him. Now, a man named Jairus, or Jairus, he was a synagogue official, or church official, or maybe a pastor, or whatever, came to he, Jesus, and fell at Jesus' feet and began begging Jesus to come to his house. Verse 42 says, For he had only, he had an only daughter, one daughter, just a daughter, about 12 years old. Get the revelation here. I just mentioned the number 12. <laughs> Interesting. The daughter was 12 years old and she was dying. Dying of what we do not know. Watch this. But as Jesus went, the people were crowding against him, almost crushing him. When a woman, we don't know this woman too. When a woman who had suffered, what's this also? Who had suffered a hemorrhage for 12 years. The young girl was 12 years. The father had asked Jesus to come to the house because the girl was dying of whatever we don't know. She was 12 years old. Here comes a woman who has also suffered an issue with blood. Hemorrhage. Listen, I don't know some of you who know about blood. Some of you who work in the hospitals and all those things. Uh, blood smells, man, and, and it has some kind of... Listen, and you're talking about this woman is suffering for 12 years. I understood this better. Again, by doing a lot of research and getting some information in the land where all this thing took place. The woman had suffered. A hemorrhage 
for 12 years. And the Bible says, watch this, and had spent all her money on doctors and could not be healed by anyone. She spent all her money. She spent all her money. I mean, when I, I, get, I got this the other day and I said, oh Lord, have mercy. How much so? I mean, I hear a lot of test. I mean, a lot of stuff from people as to how they have sown, you know, a thousand dollars to this amount and all that, and nothing has worked. The Bible said this woman spent all her money on doctors. Almost to say that she spent all her money on preachers, which I've heard that one too. People have left the church because they have spent all their money on preachers and they haven't got no results. Beloved, you're going to spend your money on preachers and not in the work of God. Not in the work of God. But on preachers, you ain't going to get nothing. She spent all her money on doctors, the Bible says. And got nothing. 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 Nothing nothing watch this verse 43 again and a woman who had suffered from from a hemorrhage for 12 years and has spent all her money on physicians or doctors and could not be healed by anyone came up behind jesus and touched the hem or the fringe of his outer robe and immediately her bleeding stopped if you don't know what Hemorrhage is, it has to do with blood, bleeding. So the woman has been bleeding for 12 years. Now imagine, imagine, most women are anemic. Most women are anemic based on, you know, this natural um, um, cycle they go through on, on monthly basis. Most women are, 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 are anemic. So you have to take in more iron and things like that. I mean, listen, I don't even want to, get too physicious okay i'm not a medical doctor but i know certain things but to bleed bleed bleeding for 12 years i mean think about the mystery behind this because if somebody is bleeding for a week when they're going through their menstrual cycle how weak they become. How all those things they go through and all that. For 12 years, the Bible says. 12 years. But the woman said to herself, look at, look at this. The Bible says that she came behind Jesus and touched. Touched Jesus. And immediately, her bleeding stopped. She needed a savior. She needed help. Her season, her time of health came. Beloved, we are in the ninth month of birthing. If you give birth before the ninth month, they call it premature. If you give birth after nine months, they call it overdue. The, the Bible says, oh, Saha says it also makes you sick. Yes, I believe that. Because I have women in my house. And I grew up from the house where women were there. So I have a knowledge about this. It makes you sick. But for 12 years. Watch this. Jesus said, who touched me? The woman needed a savior. I don't know who you need. I don't know who you need. If you, if you, Whether you need a savior, Jesus... Or you need whatever. I don't know what you need. But I'm telling you. The woman knew that she needed Jesus. If you need Jesus today. Today is your season. Today is your time. Today is your time. Today is your time. The, 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 the song goes by. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. You know, I, I like the stanza where it says, it says, 
All we have to do is to carry everything to God in prayer. All right? I mean, beloved, I don't know if you need Jesus. This woman needed Jesus. She needed Jesus. Her season came. When she saw Jesus, she says, oh, ah, my season is come. My time is come. Beloved, I am not going to let this pass. I am going to receive my breakthrough. I don't know about you in this ninth month. The last time I checked, the word, the word coincidence is not in the Greek. It's not in the Latin. It's not in the Aramaic language, the mother tongue of Jesus. So it tells me that there's no coincidence where God is concerned. There's no coincidence. Everything has its meaning. Jesus turned around and says, who touched me? And while they were all were denying Peter, oh, as always, Peter and those who were with him said, Master, the people are crowding and pushing against you. But Jesus said, someone did touch me because, watch this. This is the reason. Watch this. Because I was aware that power to heal had gone out of me. Power to heal has gone out of me. Somebody touched me with a faith. I don't know about you, but beloved, if you believe your time is come, then you better. This is the ninth month. This is the ninth month. And um, again, this September to Remember Conference is going on live. Is going on live in St. Catherine in Jamaica. Okay, in the district of Cornish. At the, at the garden at the Gethsemane. Listen, listen, listen to, the, the, to the name of where it's happening. Gethsemane Church of God in Christ. Well, you better be there. You better be here. It's happening live and tomorrow is the last day. So make your way here today. Make your way here tomorrow. Tell everybody, bring the sick. Bring the lame. Bring the blind. See what God will do. Are you listening? But give your life to Jesus today. Give your life to Jesus. Don't listen to this and go away without making that decision. Give your life to Jesus. Your life will never be the same. The woman came to Jesus. And for 12 years of sick, 12 years of being weak, 12 years of probably, you know, not smelling well, 12 years, the Bible says, that she received immediate breakthrough. I don't know if you want to be like the, 30, the guy who was there for 38 years. Or you want to receive it now. But if you want to receive. You, are, you may be tired. I don't know. I mean, it's like why do you still want to carry all this thing? Jesus says you bring your burden to me. Bring your burdens to me. He says bring it. Why do you still want to carry it? Give it to Jesus. Give your life to him today. Make him your Lord and your Savior. Your life will never be the same. Trust me. Look at people who came to Jesus. And Jesus is still at work. Through his spirit. The Holy Spirit. He's with us. He's at work today. Are you listening? And if you're that individual, I want to pray with you. I want to give my life to Jesus. You says, you know what? I want to respond to what you have said. Pastor, I want, to, I, I want Jesus. I, I want, I'm, I, am, I am tired and tired of all this that I'm going through. I can't seem to see my way forward. I can't, to, I can't seem to see this happening. I need Jesus. Beloved, he is ready to receive you too. And turn the situation around for you. If you are that person, I want to pray with you. And if you are ready, let's do that right now. Let's get it done now. The woman got it done. And instantly she got her breakthrough. How about you? Get yours done today. If you are that person, I want to pray with you. Let's pray. Say, Lord Jesus, believe it in you. Listen, the Bible says that when you believe in your heart, believe in your heart. You see, Jesus asked the, asked the guy, he didn't just say, get up and go. He said, do you want to? Do you want 
this problem to go are you tired of it if you are that if you are in that position then you need to believe right you need to believe him that he can do it for you are you listening he will do it and so if you are that person let's pray this prayer say lord jesus i thank you for this message i have heard i am convinced that you are the lord i am a sinner forgive me of my sins i believe that you took my sins upon you to the cross and nailed it on the cross you said it was finished you were dead and god raised you from the dead i believe that this day my salvation has come come into my life be the lord and savior of my life and receive me write my name in your book and make me a disciple of you i thank you for receiving me thank you jesus amen beloved that is that simple prayer that you have prayed it may sound simple but your life is connected to it look at the life of, of this woman look at the life of this guy the, their lives were connected to what they said to jesus and what they they acted on jesus may yours be the same because he has not changed he's the same yesterday today and forever he has not changed jesus is still healing i'm telling you he's still healing things are happening here in jamaica i'm telling you it's happening here in jamaica you better get yourself here all right if you are in kingston wherever you are listen september to remember the, the ninth month is happening and, and people are receiving their breakthroughs. Make your way. If you cannot, maybe you're far away, another country, wherever you are listening to me, I want you to know something. Just connect your faith. Connect your faith to the season. Connect your faith to the season. And, and, and go back to your prayers that you prayed. December 2018. On New Year's Eve, the service, or wherever you were, that you spoke and asked God to do something for you in 2019. Well, you took a seed. It is time for you to deliver the baby. In this ninth month, oh, you shall deliver. You will deliver. I'm telling you. There's, like I said, something called intentional blessing. Intentional blessing. Oh, glory be to God. God is just going to surprise you. You All you need to do is to connect your faith. God, this is the ninth month. The, the season, the time of birthing has come. Are you listening to me? If you give birth early, they call it premature. If you give birth after the ninth month, they call it overdue. Sometimes they have to even force the baby to come out. But you want to give it in the right time in that right season the angel of the lord came stirred up the water he didn't he doesn't come before that time he comes at that season this month of september has come once and it's gonna go the ninth your ninth month has come are you listening now if you just gave your life to the lord jesus i want you to make sure you get yourself a bible get yourself a bible because the, the way you're going to know more okay is for you to read the word of god and allow the Holy Spirit to help you and guide you to understand it. Are you listening? Get yourself a Bible. Now, if you also are not part of any um, church or a fellowship or any place, I want you to make sure you find yourself a Bible. Listen to me carefully. Find yourself a Bible-believing, teaching church. Okay? Get yourself involved. Introduce yourself to the leadership. Let them know you have received your salvation. You are born again. On this platform, Jesus talks about that you must be born again. <clears throat> you must be born again. Jesus said that you must be born again. Born again is a spiritual transformation. It's a supernatural spiritual birthing. Jesus told Nicodemus, the one who seems to know all the laws and all that, you must be born again. So today you are born again. Let them know that. Now, the next step you have to make sure you find yourself in. It's for you to be baptized. Get yourself baptized. Tell them you need to be baptized in water. 
all right and you'll be baptized by the holy spirit as well well i'm going to let you go now taking too much of your time today join me same time tomorrow if jesus don't show up tonight we're going to bring it all to a close the the, the conference ends tomorrow september to remember 2020 it ends tomorrow in jamaica right here in saint, saint catherine in um, uh, the district of Connors or Connors, Connors district. Okay, make sure you find yourself here. Um, when you get to, you know, um, they said Old Harbor. All right, you want to go to Connors district. Okay, when you get to the place, just ask for Gethsemane Church of God in Christ. Man, that's what is happening. It's really happening, and um, it's amazing, wonderful what God is still doing. All right, I look forward to seeing you if you're in this area. If not, I'll catch up with you same time on the platform. And um, I pray that um, you have a, a better and a deeper understanding of where we are today. May the eyes of the Lord continue to watch between us. All right. May the eyes of the Lord continue to watch between us. And um, share the brokers. Listen, share it. Tag a friend. Do a watch party. Even after it, go back and enjoy it again. You will learn something that will increase you, bring you to the place of increase and maturity of God's word. I love you with the love of the Lord and there's nothing you can do about that. All right? Have a wonderful day. And as always, as always, I want you to know that you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding. God bless you. Have a blessed day, everybody.